Hello everyone, this is Sebastian McMahon from IA Financial Group. I'm on the road, but I'm still here for the weekly review, this time ending, uh, for the week ending June 14th, 2024. So, uh, big week uh, in the US. We had the US CPI data, which was uh, surprisingly uh, soft, not soft enough to get the Fed moving, but soft enough to at least raise some eyebrows and maybe start uh, putting into the, the markets the odds that uh, uh, rate cuts might be more imminent than what was thought before. That was on Wednesday morning. But then on Wednesday afternoon, we had the Federal Reserve with a decision. And it's the first time in about a decade that we have both CPI and a Fed decision on the same day. So very interesting day. The Fed came in and, you know, pretty much pointed in the other way that they need to see some more signs of progress on inflation. So, you know, when the, the, year, the, the, the week with maybe more optimism that rate cuts are coming, but they're still coming very likely at the end of the year. So nothing uh, on the horizon yet from the Fed. So let's dig into all of these details. But before we go there, <clears throat> maybe looking at the markets at the week on Thursday. So another positive week for fixed income. Uh, year to date, we're still in positive territory for the universe and corpse indices. Uh, for equities, the TSX, uh, EFI negative, uh, positive in the US, led by technology again. So, technology, so NASDAQ up 3%, uh, emerging markets up. If you go to uh, commodities and currencies, 4% higher for the price of oil on the week. So a good uh, week here. We're at the bottom of the range. The range seems to be between $75 and $90 uh, these days. So uh, rebounding from uh, the lower part of the range. Uh, USD CAD, well, the CAD higher, uh, Euro uh, weaker, and the price of gold, again, still volatile, but a bit higher on the week. So looking at the, the US for uh, inflation, so we had a positive inflation surprise. Uh, here you have core CPI year over year on the left, month over month on the right. We could have brought you know many different uh, charts, but it, just to have an idea of where the core is sitting. Well, if you look on the left, you see that you know the progress has been steady but slow, and now there seems to be let's say an acceleration of the progress downwards. So good news there. We need to make sure that you know it's not a fluke that it continues. The Fed is taking note of that, but we're not there yet. But if you look on the right, month over month. Interestingly, the latest data point was rather weak compared to what we've seen in the previous multiple months. So that was a positive surprise. And if you, you know, I didn't bring the super core uh, component, but uh, the chart. But if I had brought the month over month for super core, you would have seen that this is the first negative print uh, since uh, 2021 on the monthly basis for the super core. So another. A very interesting data point here. Of course, in energy prices were <clears throat> rather weak on the month. Maybe that explains some of the pullback on total inflation, but core, which excludes energy, still making some good progress. Talking about core and super core on the next chart here, if you remember a few uh, few weeks back, I had pre presented that chart but showing that since the summer of 2023, the three months annualized pace for core and super core was accelerating. Uh, so, of course, that was worrying and showing that you know, there's not that much progress being made on inflation under the hood. But last month, with the negative print on the month, the three months annualized pace just normalized pretty quickly, remains pretty high. Uh, we're still talking at about, uh, an, uh, about uh, 4% here on the chart. But at least, you know, we're coming down to hurt. So, so the idea is, sorry, it's a good progress here, but uh, will the progress be sustained? Uh, that's a big question. Are we moving in the right direction steadily? Can the Fed be confident that we're making progress towards inflation target? It's going to take a few more months, a few more reports before the Fed feels comfortable that we are. So talking about the Fed here, you know, rate cuts remain elusive. So on the left, you have uh, the Fed hosted steady and indicates only one cut coming this year. This is from the dot plot. So the dot plot, uh, you have the FOMC members putting in their forecast for the end of the year. Now there's four voting, uh, four members that have zero cuts by the end of the year, seven that have one and eight that have two. So the mode is at two, but the median is at one. 
there's not that much dispersion. There's no one uh, on the dot plot that put you know a forecast of three or four cuts by the end of this year. Seems to be pretty consensus that it's zero to two. Um, so likely it's going to be by the end of the year that we have that move. But there was a few interesting tidbits uh, here. So in the statement, uh, there was a sentence that was discussing the lack of further progress towards uh, the inflation target. Now it's they it changed the word lack for modest further progress. Uh, so there are there is some progress there. Uh, Mr. Powell was uh, pretty vocal, saying that even he is li- lacking confidence in the Fed's forecast because it's a very volatile environment. So it's really data dependent. So data dependence means that it's data over dots in, in clear terms. Um, they, uh, someone asked the question, well, did you integrate? the uh, the more favorable CPI report that came out in the morning in the forecasts. He said, well, some did, some didn't, but most didn't. So maybe if the decision had come a day before or uh, a day uh, after, maybe the decision would have been quite different. This is what it means. Um, and uh, so overall, you know, as I said, it's data dependent. It's, it's uh, data over dots. Uh, we're not there yet. Likely, it's more towards the end of the year. At the beginning of the year, markets were pressing six to seven cuts. Now it's pressing about two. The, the, the Fed is talking about zero to one. So likely we're talking nothing imminent, but later uh, this year. Uh, so what we'll be watching uh, next week, housing starts uh, in Canada. Uh, the Bank of Canada, some rip deliberations. Of course, we had the first rate cut of this cycle uh, last week. So we'll have more insights into the conversations that went on there. Uh, retail sales. If you go to the U.S., going to be retail sales, industrial production, S&P Global, manufacturing and services, PMIs, and existing home sales. So big week for data in the U.S. So that wraps it up for the week. Always a pleasure to serve you. Uh, if you like the content in this, um, in this review, please share. And of course, come back again next week.